So have you ever wondered why so many birds are so brightly colored? And we have, and uh, Darwin did, and actually had Maybe. some good ideas about that a long time ago, almost 130 years ago. So we're trying to figure out if uh, the processes that lead to bright coloration in males also apply in the same ways to females. And we're particularly interested in bill color because bill color in both male and goldfinches, male and female goldfinches, is dynamic. And we wonder if the colors reflect something about the condition in real time of the birds. Did they get enough to eat today or are they um, infested with parasites or something like that? So we're trying to do some experiments to both see what leads to variation in color among individuals and also how other individuals respond to, to the color of someone else. So how do males respond to the color of their mates or how do they respond to the color of other individuals? We also find that if you, if you do enough of this sort of stuff, and not just in one lab, but many labs you know, across the world that are studying behavioral ecology, for instance, if you do enough of it across enough species in enough uh, different ecological situations, you start really understanding patterns. Ecological situations give rise to certain evolutionary responses, and those become clear after a while if you look at enough data, if you look at enough situations. I don't think it's an unreasonable goal to start looking at human behavior in the same way. Humans as another species, another ecological situation, if we can sort of figure out where the human ecological situation lines up relative to that of many other species, then we might be able to make predictions about how humans should behave. I'm really driven more by a love for nature, and but if we learn something about ourselves along the way, that's pretty cool too. Um, yes. Are you still here? Yes. Oh no. <laughs> you told me. Well, there's a lot of this sort of research that goes on in the biology department here at Oberlin. And it, we have uh, a lot of faculty for a small school, a lot of biology faculty doing a wide array of research. And so incoming students can find all sorts of things to do from molecular genetics to behavioral ecology and evolution to conservation and applied ecology, developmental biology. And Oberlin is nice because you have an opportunity to work with professors directly all my students and I interact all the time, every day. We get a lot out of it, and uh, those opportunities abound at Oberlin. So that's, I think, a really nice thing. I'm, I've always been fascinated with nature and trying to understand how nature works and why it does the weird things it does. And so as an evolutionary biologist, that's the real driver. What, what in the heck is going on out there? And interestingly, the more we find out, not just what I find out, but what other researchers find out, the more amazing it becomes. And so the fact that, for instance, birds actually respond to subtle variations in color of other individuals in ways that are predictable based on evolutionary theory just blows me away. And, I, and that's enough to keep me going. Do you think that's accurate? Do you disagree? I do think that's accurate.